All right, let's take a look at a, another fun problem. Um, we're here, we're looking at um, calculating fugacity and fugacity coefficient uh, using a cubic equation of state. So problem five, the SRK equation of state gives the following results for toluene uh, at a temperature of 383.3 Kelvin and a pressure of eight bars. Okay, so it looks like we get three real roots. Um, so we have Z, we get HR and, and SR um, for each. In this table, the first row gives the three real roots of the cubic equation for Z. The second gives the corresponding values of HR, and third gives the corresponding values of SR. The saturation pressure of toluene at 383.3 Kelvin is one bar. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pause there, okay, because if my temperature is 383.3 Kelvin in eight bars, and if at that same temperature, 383.3 Kelvin, uh, PSAT's one bar. So if P is greater than PSAT, what phase do I have? Okay. So if oh, so if I have P is greater than PSAT, I must have a liquid. Okay. And so if I have a liquid, that means I'm going to want to choose my smallest C. Okay. So that means I'm looking at this column. Okay, so liquid, I'm going to choose the smallest z, so I'm looking at this column here. Okay, all right, but if we keep going, use this information, uh, using this information, calculate the fugacity and fugacity coefficient of toluene at 383.3 Kelvin in 8 bars. If you do not believe you have sufficient information, please tell me what additional information would be needed to solve. All right, what a fun problem. <laughs> so, um, you know, the, the key here is we're asked to get fugacity coefficient and fugacity, um, but we're given HR and SR. Okay, so what we need to do is remember the link um, between them. All right, and so since I need fugacity or in, uh, fugacity coefficient, um, I'm going to go back and work these expressions up, um, namely because there's not too much to them. Okay, um, so remember that for an isothermal process, Okay, so if I have an isothermal process, uh, where is my, there we are, okay. So our definition of fugacity comes from, uh, for an isothermal process, I'll write uh, G uh, at T and P minus G naught, so at the same T, but pressure P naught, is equal to RT log F at T and P minus F naught, and this would be at T uh, and P naught. Okay. Cool. Okay. Where G naught uh, and F naught essentially correspond to some, you can think of them as a reference state or standard state, right? So what we're looking at is relative Gibbs free energies between um, the relative Gibbs free energy uh, between two states at the same temperature, um, but not necessarily at the same pressure. And here's a log ratio of fugacities. Again, two states at the same temperature, but not necessarily uh, the pressure. Okay, um, and so our trick that we're going to employ here is we're going to take our standard state or our reference state to be an ideal gas at the same conditions. Okay, so if I do that, okay, G at T and P minus G I G at T and P is equal to R T log F at T and P minus if I deal gas at T and P. Okay, so basically I've just taken my reference state to be an ideal gas at the same uh, temperature and pressure. Okay, in doing so, okay, actual minus that of an ideal gas at the same conditions, that's just G residual at T and P, okay, is equal to RT log, okay, fugacity divided by the fugacity of an ideal gas. Well, let's take it in steps, all right? This I can write as F at T and P. Fugacity of an ideal gas at T and P would just be P. Okay. And then that's equivalent to RT log V. Okay. And I'll write V at T and P. So uh, then what's the last uh, piece of this puzzle? Okay. What we're given is HR and SR. Well, remember G is equal to H, whoop, not pi. H minus TS. So therefore, G residual is equal to H residual minus TS residual. OK, 
Okay. So G residual is equal to H residual minus T S residual. So I can calculate that using the data provided in the table. All right. Remember, I'm using the first column since I have a liquid. All right. So I can get H R and S R, um, and we're given the temperature that 383.3 Kelvin. Uh, and so once I get G R, again G R would be equal to R T log V. Okay. Or all right, just for completeness sake, phi then would be the, equal to the exponential of gr divided by rt. Okay, You'll see, again, g divided by rt uh, comes up a lot. Um, and it's just a matter of uh, gr over rt is, is dimensionless. Right? rt can be thought of as uh, my thermal energy. So uh, r has units of um, energy per mole uh, per temperature. So rt has units of energy. Uh, GR has units of energy, so GR over RT is, is dimensionless. Okay, so um, yeah, so you can then directly calculate phi. Um, so phi will be dimensionless. Um, and then, um, you know, going back up to this expression, but, but not even, you know, really necessary. So if I want F, then F is equal to phi times P. So once I calculate phi um, from GR, using the data in the table, I could then go and directly calculate F. Okay, cool. So it's just remembering uh, the relationship between GR um, and phi and F, um, and then also the relationship between GR, uh, HR, and SR, so I can compute GR from the data provided in, in the table. Okay, cool. See, I told you it'd be fun.